Hi guys, this is Mark Filler. Welcome to Backendless University. With this video, we're starting a new chapter in this video series where we talk about Backendless APIs. There are so many APIs in Backendless and I plan to cover pretty much all of them. And it was rather hard to figure out which one to start with, uh, whether it's the data management, uh, file service, geolocation, messaging, or user service. And I thought that user service would actually be the most appropriate to start with. After all, whenever you start building an application, the topics of user registration, login, role identification for the users are going to be one of the first that you're going to consider. So user service it is, and we'll, we'll talk about it today, specifically the idea of user properties. But before we get there, let's talk about user service. As we learned earlier, and here's a link where you can learn a little bit more about the user service from the overview perspective. It is responsible for identifying the user, thus user registration, logging in the user into the application so your app would know who that user is and all the security on the service side would trigger in and apply appropriate roles for the user. The core of it is the actual user. So how is user identified in the application? Backanalyst makes it very simple by providing the concept of user properties. So what is a user property? Well, take a look at a registration form. For instance, here's one that Airbnb uses on their website. And here you can see that it consists of the first name, last name, email, password, birthday, and there is this checkbox that you can uh, select to indicate that the user would receive coupons, promotions, and uh, stuff like that. So pretty much every single field that you see here could be a user property. And from the coding perspective, it's going to look exactly that way. In backendless user properties really become just the columns in the users table. And I'll show you in a second how to configure that. So individual columns would have their data types. So for instance, first name and last name are going to be just string values. Date of birth could be date time. And then the checkbox to receive coupons could be just a, a Boolean field, yes or no. And this way, programming for user properties becomes rather simple because you can describe it as a key value pairs. Now, in Backendless, you can predefine your user properties using Backendless Management Console, or you can have the whole thing driven through the code. But I'm going to show you how to do it with Backendless Console first, and then we will jump into the code. Today, I'm going to use Android, there will be other videos for JavaScript and iOS. And I'll show you how user registration works where you describe user properties programmatically. The very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create an app which we will be using in uh, our demos. I will call it My Demo App. The app has been created. Uh, something very important before we jump to the user properties I want to show is uh, going to be on the Manage screen. And right here, the, in the app settings section, which is selected by default, you will see your application ID and then a bunch of secret keys. So these values are going to be used in your application to identify your app, but we'll get to this in a second. But for now, let's click on data. And here the users table is selected by default. It is empty because it is a brand new app. To see the user properties uh, or table schema, as we call it, we click on the table schema button and here we see that password, name and email are the default properties that were created by Backhandless. We can create a new one and call it date of birth and select the type of it. It's going to be date time. Save. So now there are four properties defined for a user. You can apply some additional rules for each of these properties. For instance, you see that the email property is selected as identity, which means whenever users will be logging in, they will have to provide email as identity and their password. You can change the identity to any other field so long that the data in for that field is going to be unique. You can also identify some properties as required, which means that whenever user registers, the properties which are required must be present in the registration. Finally, the validator, and you will see here a drop down with a bunch of different validators, can be established to enforce some additional rules on the structure and the format of your data. So these are the user properties. You can register a user using the management console right here 
by clicking the Add New button and then type in an email address. So here I'm going to enter joe at backendless.com and then the password will be password. So now a user is created and an object ID to that user has been assigned. The next step will be is to show how to register a user using these properties right from an Android application. So for this I'm going to launch Android Studio. And here we have the exactly the same project that was created when we were setting up development environment in the video dedicated to the topic of how to select development environment. So let's go ahead and start uh, adding the code to register a user. The very first thing that we'll need to do is to initialize backendless application. And for this, I will use the call backendless.init app. Backendless.init app needs to be called only once in your application. There is no reason to duplicate that line of code everywhere. And somewhere early on, perhaps in the main activity when the application starts, doing that initialization would be quite appropriate. So in the init app, we will need to provide application ID and the secret key for that application. So for this, I will switch back to console, select the Manage screen, copy application ID, and copy the Android secret key. And finally, the last parameter is going to be the version number. V1 is the version number that is created by default for every application. This is all you need to do to initialize the app. But now let's get to the actual uh, essence of what today's subject is about, is registering user using user properties. In Backendless SDK, there is a special class called Backendless User. And that class provides you with the capabilities to contain all the user properties for any given user. So here I'm going to create an instance of this class. And populate it with the properties. So here we have a property of email. Let's say it's going to be bob at backendless.com. We'll set the password. Let's say it's going to be the word password. And let's also define a custom property which does not exist in Backendless Console yet. And for this, there is a method set property that can that can take any arbitrary key and value. So let's say it is going to be eye color and the value will be brown. So this way using the set property method you can set virtually any kind of property that would be necessary within your application to identify a user. Now to register the user there is an API call that looks like this. Backendless user service register and it takes the user object. Now notice that we are executing this code on the main UI thread of the application because we are right there in the main activity, the onCreate method. Perhaps it's not uh, the best practice to add this kind of code in the, into the onCreate method on the main activity, but for the simplicity's sake, I'm going to keep it here because the purpose of this video is just to demonstrate how the register API works. Since we are in the main thread, we cannot use blocking I.O. and if I were to uh, execute the code like this as shown here in the video, there will be an exception because there will be some network I.O. going on to the backendless service to register the user. To avoid this, we need to create an asynchronous call. And to do that, we add the second parameter, which is the async callback. Now we'll let Android Studio generate the callbacks. There are two callbacks. One of them is called handle response, and the other one is handle fault. And as the names suggest, handle response will be invoked whenever a user is properly registered. So I will just log, add a log message that will say user has been registered. Also notice that the argument of this callback is the backendless user object. So it will be the user object that represents, in this case, bob at backendless.com, but now is registered on the server. So object ID will be assigned to that user. If a fault occurs, I'm also going to log it and just display fault information. So 
So this is it from the coding perspective. One other thing that is quite important is if you take a look at the Android manifest, I added the user's permission tag to grant the internet permission so that a application can communicate with the backend. Now this application is ready to run, so let's go ahead and execute it. So the application now ran, and we should see a log message that says right here, user has been registered. So let's take a look at what happened on the back end. So right here, if we return back to the data screen, we now see that there is another user, bob at backhandless.com, and notice that there is an iCaller column, uh, exactly the same property that was added through the code, and now it is part of the user properties on the server. In fact, if we switch to table schema, we'll see that the iCaller with the type string is now part of the properties. So with this, uh, it uh, demonstrates that the properties can be defined not only through the console, but also through the code. I hope you found this information useful and will start using this API in your applications as well. There is more to this uh, from the user service perspective that we will be exploring in future videos. Uh, we will be talking about the login, password recovery, assigning roles to the users, and many other aspects of managing users within your application. So please stay tuned for more videos, subscribe uh, to our channels to receive notifications when new videos are posted, and uh, until next video.